Tim. Um, Tim and I are getting quite used to doing these double acts. Um, last one was in London, I think, doing a set about inclusive growth. And I think people in the council staff referred to as Mark and Wise, but uh, I'll leave you to decide which one's which. Um, but I'm quickly going to go through the presentation what I wrote this morning. Um, those of you certain age might not get that joke, but it's, uh, it's worth Googling. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm from um, Economic Regeneration. Um, and you might be thinking, why are we here? Um, but basically, um, two things. I have responsibility for something called City Leadership Board in Hull, and something for something called the City Plan. And as part of the City Leadership Board and the City Plan, we've spent a lot of time thinking about how we make the connectivity between all these various themes that are in the city. So you've got economic development, you've got regeneration, you've got business, um, public health. And what we've been doing over the last two or three years is trying to make those connections across the piece. Um, because we recognise that um, if you look at food, food has as much to play in terms of economic development as anything else, both from a, a producer point of view, if you like, and making sure that we have a healthy workforce that can actually engage in economic activity. Um, so we're very keen to be involved in this. Um, so much so we've, we've been working with uh, Brian and your colleagues to look at how we can make sure that our business support programs do help with business startups. Look at local opportunities for training skills, development and employment. Um, and I think in a wider context, we're very aware that there's a lot of change out there at the moment. And one of the things we, we do in regeneration is try and, one, initiate change, but also try and respond to it. So in my world, um, we're talking about local supply chains. And there's nothing more taxing our brains at the minute than the impl implications of Brexit and what that means. And the simple answer is that nobody knows what it really means yet, because there's no decision yet. But when it does impact, and it will impact at some point, various scenarios could sort of play out from um, queues at docks in, in terms of customs arrangements, which will have an impact on the food supply chains, uh, and those sort of things. So we're very keen to see how, that, how we can understand that and work with it to make sure we look at things like local resilience. Because if, uh, at the worst case tonight, food chain supply, uh, sorry, if local food supply chains start um, get congested, then that will have an implication of lots of people. So we're just trying to make sure that we understand that, and people understand that is a, a wider concern than just those in regeneration. Um, and clearly, from a business support point of view, the more local businesses can have a start-up in, in Hull, then the more pounds we retain locally. And I think that's been a key issue for this city. It's always been very good at generating its own wealth. How it retains that wealth, and I'll come to something a bit later, is a significant challenge for the city. And one of the things I, I try and do with these sort of things is hopefully try and give you things to think about in the workshops. And one of the things we want to think about is how we maintain a lot of the whole pound a bit more locally in the local economy uh, without it going to other parts of the world. And I get a lot of businesses talking to me saying, we want to invest in this, we want to invest in that. We want to do our sort of corporate sort of responsibility role. But sometimes they struggle to engage. Uh, in various initiatives. So I suppose that's another challenge for me. How do we get businesses involved in this conversation? Um, and certainly in terms of city leadership, well, that's, that's a, a continuing conversation we have. And we've done lots of pieces of work around care leavers, um, this particular initiative and others. And actually businesses are happy and willing to get engaged, but it's how they get engaged. Um, and finally, um, not the final point by any means, but certainly one that we are looking at in terms of sustainability in its widest sense, is food miles and packaging, which has been brought to the attention in, through, through uh, blue plants and, and those sort of things with plastic and those sort of things. Um, a real key issue for us, and we have uh, lots of big words in regeneration that we talk about, um, but this is about the circular economy, so how do we make less waste, how do we take waste out of the system? How do we get more local food into the system? Um, because all those have an impact in terms of congestion, transport, air quality, and those sort of things. So there's still some real challenges in this, we think, but actually getting to this point, we feel a real benefit to us as regeneration, and we will carry on. But I just want to move on to the next slide. In terms of the city plan, we've delivered significant growth. Um, 
and when we set off on this journey, I think we were a bit, how successful is it going to be? And I think I'm conscious of one or two of my board members in the room. Um, we could have been successful in terms of economic regeneration, the physical regeneration stuff. Um, we're good at building buildings. Um, we're now very good at getting people into work. Uh, our unemployment levels are probably the lowest they've ever been. Um, but, and it was again touched upon by, by the bishop, um, there's lots of people who haven't enjoyed the benefit of that, that growth. Uh, so much so that our deprivation indices, and I heard the word deprivation, um, is, is the worst it's ever been. So what aren't we doing that is getting to those people um, in terms of spreading that wider benefit of that economic growth? Um, and if we just move on. So, as Tim says, we, we were taking this back into the council to see how we can support the whole charter. Uh, there's lots of businesses and traders, and I appreciate that we have some in the room, that are clearly wishing to get engaged, and we can embed the principles in our, in our work. Um, but I think there's lots of work that, as we refer to, the anchor organisations can do to sort of set that framework for you to work within. So, those are some of the things we, we can probably do in terms of getting organisations, the university, ourselves and others to sort of sign up to this and actually build that into their thinking about purchasing, catering choices, etc, etc. There are lots of things we can do in this conversation. And I think the final point I just want to finish on is um, who knows where this will go. Um, and the reason I say that, I was in um, Bridlington last week at the business convention and there were two speakers there. Um, one was Sir Bob Geldof, who did his usual thing about <coughs> Band-Aid and all the rest of it. And again, if you're a certain age, you might not know what Band-Aid is. Um, but there's a chap there called Josh Littlejohn. Um, and the common theme that was running through both their presentations was, you start off at a certain point, but you're never quite sure where you end up and what you have an impact on. So Josh Littlejohn, and I suggest you, you sort of, again, do a bit of research into him started off having a, a, a sort of food cafe, I suppose, really, in Edinburgh, in Scotland. Um, and he tells a story about one day a sort of homeless person came and asked him for a job. Um, and before that, he'd sort of run a scheme whereby customers could um, buy lunch, but also prepare for lunch for a homeless person. So that's how he engaged with the, um, the homeless community. And Cut long story short, since then he's, he's gone on to help homeless people into work through food, because food is the common the common issue for that. Um, and he tells what Bob Geldof's done in terms of um, his whole issue, which I won't go through. Um, what I'm trying to say is that none of this can be planned in any restrictive way, and that's what we're trying to, to reassure that you allow that creativity to flow, and who knows where this will end. Uh, and certainly we'll we'll take that back into the council and try and provide that support that I think we we, we can offer. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you. So, Tim, come on, thank you for such wholehearted support. I'm really very pleased to have you here, and thank you very much for saying nice words. As you say, we, we don't know where this is going to end. How can any of us, and with our current political climate, I think probably none of us know.